Hey, what's everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a bordered text animation like so. It'll also have this radial wipe that brings it in, and then a radial wipe which takes it out. Also, it's going to be completely savable, so we can drag and drop this into any production at any point, change the text up, and it is all ready to go. So we only have to create this one time. So let's go ahead and get started on this effect. First thing I did was import some footage. This is the footage I got from my course. If you are interested in learning Premiere Pro through a tutorial based method, sort of like how you would look it up on YouTube, but in a very directed way, check out my course. It's a great course for learning Premiere Pro and feeling like a master by the end of it. Anyway, once we have our footage imported, I'm going to go ahead and go to the rectangle tool in my tools here. Uh, it may be hiding under the pen or the ellipse. We're just going to draw ourselves a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect here because we're going to use the program to help make it perfect. So just try to get it centered, make it however big you want, and then release there. Maybe when you drew it, it looks something like this. You need to go over to the Essential Graphics panel. Find your rectangle. Uh, it's going to be a shape right here. So not in the Browse, but the Edit. Then go down, turn off the fill, turn on the stroke, and you'll get your border. 40 is a little large here, so we're going to bring that down just a touch maybe somewhere around 25. And if you notice, because I was farther along the timeline, it created this graphics layer over here. So I'm just going to drag it on up to the beginning here. Now, let's make this perfectly centered. To do that, all I have to do is click on the shape and these two little buttons on the left and right, vertical center, horizontal center, now it's perfectly centered. We're then going to create some text. So we're going to go to the left. We're going to look for the type tool. I'm going to click just somewhere in here, and we're going to type something. Last time I said it was the Cinque Terre, so we're going to put that again. I don't think it actually is, um, but that's just, you know, it reminds me of this. So click on that text, and then now you're going to click both these buttons again, and now your text is perfectly centered. We can also play around with the coloring. You know, we could go down here, click on our shape again, go to the stroke, and if we wanted, you know, grab some colors from the background, that might make it look cool. So maybe like a deep purple, anything like that works. And it's fully customizable after you save it as well, which makes it a really good saved effect. Now all we gotta do is add in that animation. So we're gonna go into our effects, and we're gonna go down into transition, which is under the video effects. You don't want transition outside of it. You don't want video transitions. You want video effects, you want transition, and then you want radial wipe. So once we have the radial wipe, you can also just search it up there, drag and drop that onto our graphics layer. We're then going to go over to the effects on the left side, and you'll notice that the effects actually come up here on the right, which is great because that means it'll save with it. We're going to take the transition complete, and we're going to bring it up to 100. You see it's going to bring it up like so. Start the keyframe. Make sure at the very beginning of the film, I'm going to go 20 frames forward couple different methods to do this you can click this 20 times what I like to do is I hold shift down and then go one two three four brings you up to 20 holding shift goes five at a time you can also just click right there and go to 20 if I click on this and bring it in a touch I can zoom in over here I'm gonna bring this now down to zero and now we have the footage so it comes in it looks a little linear though by that I mean it looks uh, there's no you know pizzazz to it there's no fast or changing motion to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the beginning one, and we're going to say easy out, click on the outside one, right click, right click on them, easy in. You'll see that they go to these little uh, stopwatch or hourglasses. Now, what this does is it's going to smooth the motion out a little bit. You can see it's a little smoother. But what I like to do is I like to lean it to one side or the other. So if we go to the transition complete on the left here, we drop this down. You're going to see all these little graphs over here. All we're doing, just zoom into the, the end keyframe here, click this, and just drag it a little bit left. What this means is it's going to create most of the animation in the first 30% of it, and then it's going to slow it way down and complete the rest of it in the last 70%. So we get this fast pop and then sort of slide into place, and that's what really creates a fun little animation. See how it does that? So it comes in really fast, and then notice that last part from here to here, it slows down, and like I said, it makes it feel a lot better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go forward to whenever we want it to end. I say about four to five seconds is good on this. So we're going to go to four seconds. We're going to re-click our keyframe. If you click this button, it'll add a keyframe. And then we're going to move forward 20. And we're going to add a keyframe right there as well. And we're just going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to right-click on this. We're going to say we want this one to easy out, this one to easy in. And then we want to make sure that this last keyframe goes back up to 100%. So it's, it's going from 
100 to zero, and then zero the whole time, and then it goes from zero back up to 100. We can now click on the keyframe and add a little bit of that, except let's go the opposite direction to sort of make it like start slow and then slide out real quick. And let's take a look. And yep, that looks good. It's sort of the exact opposite of what we just did. It starts slow and then it finishes itself real quick. And so now what we have is this animation right here. You don't have to do all this keyframe manipulation. You could just go the basic 100, 0, 0, 100. But it really, I think, creates the professional vibe of the effect. So I think it's pretty important. Now, once we have this created and finished, we're going to chop off the backside. So we're going to chop off that side. I'm using the cut tool for this. I clicked C on my keyboard. You can also just go find the razor tool up here and click on it there. I click on that and I click the delete key to remove it. Now I'm going to right click on this and we're going to export as motion graphics template. We'll give it a name. Um, let's name it border text animation. Gonna go ahead and click on the okay. It's going to send it to the local templates folder. Now I can just go ahead and delete all that work that we just did. And now if I go into the browse, I can find if I search for border, we have border text animation. You can see it pops up right there. Drag and drop that on. And now it is available wherever we want. If we wanted to, for example, change the text, we just click on the text right here and we change it to, you know, Roma, Italy. Click both these buttons and we're back to center, back to the new effect. And we have now just created that effect in about 30 seconds. That is it for this tutorial. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Like I said, I have created a course that goes through many, many, many tutorials in a very organized manner so that they all build off of one another. It is a great way to learn and to master Premiere Pro. Check that out in the description below. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to make videos weekly and trying to explore the different realms of Premiere Pro. Thanks, everybody, and until next time, see ya.